بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I want to thank Sheikh Adam and Brother Ihsan. I think that woke up everybody now, so we're good. <laughs> Inshallah, the Sheikh has recited for us this morning. He said, As-sabirina wal-sadiqina wal-qanitina wal-munfiqina wal-mustaghfirina bil-ashar. So let's pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be among those people. So Inshallah, there is no... Uh, uh, there's no a problem and no harm by, inshallah, getting up a little bit earlier. So, inshallah, khair, just take advantage of this and make istighfar and make uh, dhikr. And, uh, inshallah, or recite Quran in every letter you recite. How many hasana are there? There's hasana multiplied by 10. You're right. And uh, so, inshallah, uh, uh, you know, this is just a little thing. You see how much that we have so you can imagine tomorrow we're gonna inshallah come in when the Ramadan starts and how many rakahs we pray taraweeh and all this so we take this lightly and it's different of opinions that's ijtihadat inshallah everybody is uh, all opinions are accepted but just come on to a conclusion so all of you inshallah can go with uh, without any um, like they say, friction. Okay, so inshallah khair, barakallah feekum. This is a month of Sha'ban, and I want you to tell me what is so special about Sha'ban. Anybody can tell us? Huh? It's just a month of, for Ramadan, of course. What else is there? What is so special if you, you are in Sha'ban? Huh? To be prepared for Ramadan. Used to pray so how can you days. prepare for Ramadan? Fasting, that's what it is. That's what I want you to remember. What is so special about Sha'ban is additional fasting. And you know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, where one of the companions saw the Prophet ﷺ, he said, that I've seen you fast so much in Sha'ban. What is, why uh, is this? And he answered him and he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, يغفر الناس عن ترفع الأعمال فيه إلى الله وأحب أن يرفع عملي وأنا صائم. That means that this is a month that many people are not aware of. They are in heedlessness of. And this month is the annual report of the deeds taken up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want when my deeds are taken up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to be in a state of fasting. So if the sunnah is to do plenty of fasting in this month, and inshallah, may Allah accept for all of us, Allahumma Um You know, uh, my talk today, inshallah, is about the siyam and how to kind of prepare ourselves. And uh, I wanted to ask all of us a question. How many times we have witnessed Ramadan? Huh? Did we win plenty? How old are you? 19? So you must have witnessed 19 Ramadans, right? And so on, right? So the how many times when Ramadan is almost over, we look at ourselves and we say, Inshallah, next Ramadan I'll do better. Huh? We say that all the times, right? Because we miss so much on so many opportunities in Ramadan. And uh, my uh, talk today is to remind ourselves, line up things from now. You know, you plan vacation, you plan meetings, you plan whatever it is, you plan six months in advance, a year in advance. Well, what about Ramadan? So take some time off. Take advantage of what is in Ramadan. And in Ramadan, there are so many opportunities. I wanted to ask you now, there are so many good deeds that the rewards are multiplied. So you go ahead, raise your hand and tell me one by one, what are those things that we can, that we know the, if you do it in Ramadan, it's so special, it's the reward is so multiplied. Come on. Huh? 
reciting Quran, inshallah. What is so special about reciting Quran? You know reciting Quran is all the time, all year, right? All the time, 24-7, inshallah. But what is so special about reciting it in Ramadan? Because it was unzila fihi al-Qur'an, subhanAllah. This is the month that was, the Qur'an was revealed. And you, and, and, and you are reviewing the and reciting in, in, in this. And also what is so special, that the Prophet Sallallahu you know the hadith, uh, and Ibn Abbas, and that the, uh, where it tells us that the Prophet Sallallahu and Jibreel used to review uh, the Qur'an once a year until the last year and was reviewed how many times? Al-Ard al-Akhira twice. So, the, um, so that's what we, we, we're following, the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu now, in reciting the Qur'an, we always, you know, have four things to remember. Number one, they're just the recitation itself. And I say, um, you know, for those of us who recite the Qur'an, you look at several things. Uh, number one, the language. If it's not your mother tongue language, then we should work on that. And a lot of time we find difficulties, but alhamdulillah, we excel in so many other languages. Might as well excel in the language of the Quran. It's, it is, those are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is barakah in just reciting the Quran, and we just mentioned the letter. So if, if you want to see a page of the Quran, you will see about 500 to 600 letters in there. And this is about 5,000 to 6,000 rewards or hasanah. So if you take the whole Quran, it's 3 million to 3.6 million hasan. Allahu Akbar. Huh? So this is just the recitation, there's barakah in it. Number two, tadabbur, to understand the Quran. Just the mere recitation is barakah in it and should not stop us if we don't understand the language, but we should, inshallah, obviously the purpose of the Quran is huda, guidance. And in order to understand that, we have to understand the words that we're reading. And from now on, line a book of tafsir that you need to follow. And um, let me just ask, I don't know if we discussed that in the past, but let me ask all of you, what book of tafsir you read? How do you understand the Quran? Do you, do you have a reference, a book of tafsir? Anybody? I'm sure you all read book of tafsir, yes. Tafsir ibn Kathir, mashallah. Which one? The Mukhtar, which Mukhtasar? Huh? So the, the reason I say that because there are several books of, and they're all Mukhtasar. The, the book of ibn Kathir is what is called? Tafsiru al Quran al Azim. Huh? So the book ibn Kathir is Tafsir al Quran al Azim, and that's by ibn Kathir. But that is, it is so expanded for beginners. And many of us, um, so there is like summarized or Mukhtasar Ibn Kathir, and there's Mukhtasar written by many scholars. One of them that <clears throat> I'm sure you're referring to is the English one, right? That we have the abridged. So that's by Al Mubarak Furi, Safi Rahman, Al Mubarak Furi, Rahimahullah. And this is a great book, and the translation is excellent. And if that's the book you read, Alhamdulillah, it's, it's wonderful. Now, there are other books, and I'm sure in, in Urdu, and there's other books, but just line up a book now so you can, inshallah, put a program so you can, by the end of Ramadan, inshallah, you have finished the Quran and made khutmah, but also not just khutmah. A lot of people are interested in just swept through the Quran and recite, and at the end of Ramadan, he said, I have three khutmahs, but didn't understand a single ayah. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to understand what you read, inshallah. And number three, obviously, when you make the dabbur, understanding, then the goal is to apply. And the goal is to follow. Ittabi'u ma unzila ilaykum min rabbikum. Ittabi'u, it means follow. And follow, that means you have the Quran as your leader and you follow. You follow, you apply everything. And that's the purpose and that's the, uh, the, the, the goal. 
Now on the top of that, then you take what you have done, number one and number two and number three, to others. huh? Because if you do one and two and three, you are salih, you're righteous. But righteousness should be conveyed to others. Right? And that's why you become, instead of salih, muslih. Right? So you will take this guidance. And the first people you take the guidance to is your family. And then you go further out, inshallah. So this is where the Quran. So this is number one, recitation of the Quran in Ramadan. Any other deeds that are, the rewards are multiplied. Sadaqat, alhamdulillah, we, inshallah, I'm not going to expand on this. Alhamdulillah, we, we, and this is something you line up. Most uh, Muslims pay their zakah in, in this month, uh, where al hawl you know, you have to pay every year. So people prepare themselves to pay the zakat in Ramadan and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all our uh, zakat and sadaqat, inshallah. What is number three? Nawafil. Huh? Nawafil. Nawafil, like what? Like what nawafil? Tell me what, what are specifically? Taraweeh. So qiyam al layl. Now this is, we have to really hold on and, and talk about this. Qiyam al layl. The virtues of Qiyam al -Layl. You know, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man qama Ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhammi. The best salah after farida is Qiyam al -Layl. The best salah, as the Prophet ﷺ said, afdalu salati ba'd al-farida Qiyamu al-Layl. And Qiyam al -Layl is not specified only for Ramadan. Well, I don't say this to you, I say this to myself. Because many of us have shortcomings on this. And this is uh, where we have to really remember and build the momentum from Ramadan on, and maybe we start even before Ramadan, inshallah. And Qiyam al layl the, uh, how many rakahs Qiyam al layl Huh? Somebody says 20. How many rakahs? Exactly, there's no number, there's no specific number. A man came into the Prophet ﷺ, he said, how do you do Qiyam al-Layl? How do you do? And he said to him, what? <clears throat> huh? Mathna, mathna. He said to him, you pray them two by two. He did not tell him, you pray specific number. Right? The witr, the Prophet ﷺ, the witr could be, one could be, could be, could be, could be. So it's all came from the Prophet ﷺ, right? So this. Now, so I wanted to get to a point, and I wanted to all, alhamdulillah, understand this. You will find people sometimes, they pray eight, and some people they pray 20, and some people pray what? 36. In Taraweeh and Ramadan, right? Imam Shafi'i. Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ahmad, they do the 20. Imam Malik, 36. Amr bin Abdul Aziz, 36. Right? So, and sometimes you find some places, they... 8, 20, 8, 20, boom, right? So the, 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 the point is the Prophet ﷺ always prayed 8 and 3. So that's 11. Hadith Aisha. And, but then when the Prophet came, somebody came and asked him, he said 2 by 2. The Khulafa, they prayed 20. From Amr ibn Khattab on, they prayed 20. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al Khulafa al Rashidina min ba'di. Inshallah, it's all accepted, okay? Inshallah, it's all accepted. You want to do pray 8, inshallah, it's fine. You want to pray 20, inshallah, it's fine. But I want you to remember also a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ that says, مَنْ قَامَ مَعَ الْإِمَامِ حَتَّى يَنْصَرِفْ كُتِبَ لَهُ قِيَامُ لَيْلَ Whomever do taraweeh or do qiyam al-layl with the imam, and finish with the Imam. When the Imam finished, he finishes his prayers, 
you have the reward if you have done the whole night. So just remember that, inshallah, and do what your heart tells you. And it's all accepted, inshallah, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept. But remember, Qiyam al-Layl is, it's, you should not really miss on it, even if it was for your rakhaz. Because what you are doing in Qiyam al-Layl, you are listening to the recitation of the Qur'an. And I've seen many of us sometimes, you see people attend the masjid and do taraweeh, and when it's eight rak'ahs, they whiz through the door, right? And then people stay till 20. And then the people till they finish the 20 and they go out, they see some of the people who prayed eight rak'ah there chatting, right? Outside. Now, they miss so much, right? So don't be one of those. If, if you have some, you want to go and continue at home, inshallah, it's fine. You want to go by, uh, home, recite the Quran, inshallah, it's fine. But if you have, and I want many of us to just time between when the f Imam finished 8 and the, when the Imam finished the 20, it's only about 20 minutes or 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, right? There's an extra 40 minutes many of us, alhamdulillah, can, can do. Uh, so like he said, nawafil, extra, do extra, do more. Because remember this hadith, the Prophet said, مَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَضْتُ عَلَيْهِ huh? There's nothing most beloved to me to draw my servant closer to me more than he or she performs the obligations, the fara'id, salat, siyam, zakah. And then he said, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّ And my servant still drawing closer and closer to me with what? With nawafil, with the extras. Huh? And he would get closer to me and, until I love him. حَتَّى أُحِبَّ And when Allah loves you and he said, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ When, if I loved my servant, كنت ها كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به وبصره الذي يبصر به ويده التي يبطش بها ورجله التي يمشي بها ولا إن سألني لا أعطينه ولا إن استعاذني لا أعيذنه and he will get so closer that I love him and if I love them then I will whatever he sees he will only see what pleases Allah and whatever he hears, he will only hear what pleases Allah. And whatever he does with his hand, he will only do what pleases Allah. And wherever his feet take him to, it will only take him to what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he asks me, he say, he didn't say, I will give him. He says, Wala u'tiyanna. You know, it's, it's like, it's like, wow, wallahi la uti. It's like, wow, qasam, lam ta'kid, and noon tajdeed. You know, a'tiyanna, right? Yeah, I mean, this is so much uh, affirmation and confirmation that Allah, when you ask him, he will give you. And if you seek refuge in him, he will protect you. He will grant you that. Allahu Akbar. So do the excess, do the nawafil. This draws us closely to Allah more and more and more. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us, inshallah, among those people. And remember, when you're in Qiyam al-Layl, make sure not only your body is there, right? Also your heart is there. Because sometimes you're here and we're here and, and we are spacing out somewhere. So, uh, inshallah, uh, one of the things. So this is Qiyam al-Layl, so we mentioned. What else is there? Yeah, fasting is not restricted only to food and drink. All Limbs and senses should be... MashaAllah, excellent. So the siyam, to watch out our siyam. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want from our siyam just the hunger and does not want from our qiyam just the sleeplessness, right? He wants us to fast and follow, like lowering the gaze, right? Watching the tongue. So everything should fast. Our eyes should fast from haram. Our tongue should fast from haram, and all our actions should fast from haram. And also, and also, 
You know, when you fast, you fast from what? From food, right? Food is lawful. It's halal, right? Right? And so you fast and you keep away from what is lawful in obedience to Allah. So now when you're going to go and break the fast and you have the food in front of you, ask yourself, is this food that I'm eating, the earning, are they halal or haram? Because if your earnings is haram, what is, we missed. We missed so much on siyam, right? We missed so much on taqwa. And that's what we have. So they say, you are keeping away from halal, but then when you break in the fast, you break in fast. If there's a haram, that's where you have a question mark here. So we watch out, purify your money. And tathir, the, the earnings. So if there is anything we are involved in haram, make an intention to and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you can get rid of it and, um, and do your best. Because you remember, if there's anything that we have is haram, everything will be, we will be risking the acceptance of that ibadah. We will be risking the acceptance of the ibadah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that guy who went to Hajj, right? Ash'ath Aghbar, huh? And he would raise his hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would ask him, ask him, ask him. Then the Prophet said, وَمَطْعَمُهُ حَرَامُ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامُ وَغُذِيَ بِالْحَرَامُ فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ He's making, he's going to hajj and all this, and, and it's raising, but yet all his earnings haram, all his clothes haram, and, and everything is haram. So the question is, the dua may not be uh, answered if there is haram in our earnings. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us tatheer for those things also. So let me ask you a question. This question I was asked when I was youngster. Somebody came in to me, he said, oh, Ramadan, are you fasting? I said, yes. And he said, why are you fasting? So why are you fasting in Ramadan? Huh? That's the fruits of fasting, but why are you fasting? You know, when, they, when he asked me, my answer was, I was fasting because everybody else is fasting. The whole society is fasting. My parents are fasting, I'm fasting. So I wanted to make sure it's not taqlid. It's not like, you know, okay, we're going with the flow, right? And well, why are you getting on this boat? Everybody else is getting on this boat. No. It ha so Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said, listen to this. مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا وَغُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ دَمِ Any act of worship, we always have to ask ourselves, why are we doing it? We're doing it. To please Allah, we're doing it because it's part of our faith. It's a faridah. Allah has mandated on us to fast. That's why we're fasting. We're obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mandated on us salah. I am praying because Allah mandated on this. It's not to show off that I'm fasting with the, you know, and it's not. Um, and ihtisaba, what does ihtisaba mean? He said, imanan wa ihtisaba. What is ihtisaba? You remember this hadith came three times in the same form. Man sama Ramadan, man qama Ramadan, man qama Laylat al-Qadr, imanan wa ihtisama. So ihtisama is not for the sake of Allah. I mean, it's not the meaning of the sake of Allah. But what is it, ihtisama? Ihtisama is to expect a reward for this obligation that you're doing, and I'm hoping that Allah will accept this. So ihtisama yahtasibu al-ajr عند Allah. So ihtisab al-ajr, that means you are doing it, like he said, for the sake of Allah to get that reward. And to hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you that deed. To hope, raja, that Allah accept that deed. And I want to underline this because many of us sometimes we do the deed and we just take it for granted it is accepted. No, ya akhi. Listen to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِيلُ رَبَّنَا 
تقبل منا انك انت السميع this is ابراهيم and اسماعيل عليهم السلام what were they doing building the kaaba the most noble job on the face of earth huh to build the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them. And at the end they said, what did, what did they say? Oh Allah accept. So you could, you always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the deeds. Rabbana taqabbal minna. The Prophet sallallahu told us when he breaks his fast, he say what? Among the dua he says, wa thabut al-ajru insha'Allah. So the reward insha'Allah I I get the reward. Huh? So always, always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the, the, uh, the, the deeds, and that's where uh, you do. The last, how much time we still have? Since you started at 5, not at 40, 45. <laughs> so how much? The, the shuruk 6.15? Oh, 56. So we still have a few minutes, inshallah. I just want to mention, uh, last thing is Laylatul Qadr. This is among uh, the, the virtues of Ramadan, that Laylatul Qadr, which is the night of power and which is the uh, best night of the year and the best reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give us, khayrun min alfi shahr, is the reward of a thousand months. Now, when is Laylatul Qadr? The 27th, was it? The last odd night, okay? Any other saying? The 27th? One of the odd nights and the last 10 days. So it's the odd night, the last one of the last odd nights, right? Like, like the, of the 10 days, the last 10 days. Okay, all right. Now let me ask you this. Uh, Darren Noor is going to start fasting on Monday. And Adam Center, well, Darren Noor teamed up with Adam Center. Let's forget Adam Center. Team, another masjid, they're starting on... A different day, like the following day. So their Laylatul Qadr would be on this masjid on that night, and the other one would be on that night. So which one is Laylatul Qadr? <laughs> you can do it here and then go there and do it there, Laylatul Qadr. <laughs> the, uh, remember, you know, when you want to go and do a business, right? You want to go and build a house, or you want to go and open a store, right? You always do extra steps, and you find yourself, you say, you know what? I want to play it safe. I want to make sure nothing goes wrong, right? I want to make sure I guarantee everything, right? Now here in Ramadan, and Qurba Allah, we should do the same, right? The Prophet ﷺ said, إِلْتَمِسُوهَا فِي الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ Of course the Prophet ﷺ said, it will be on the odd nights and it will be on 27. There's many ahadith. Now the gathering of those ahadith, when there's ahadith, nusus, in, in, in our deen, and they have different information about the same thing, so there's something called jam'u al-ahadith. What would be the conclusion of this? So the ulama, they have always istimbat and ishtihad. So many scholars have the opinion that the night of power changes every year. Like one year comes on the 23rd, one year comes on the 27th, one year's, whatever it is, but we take the most and the safest hadith for us that we can guarantee, guarantee, you know, that we can inshallah do Laylatul Qadr, so we do the last 10 nights. We do the last 10 nights and every night of them as Laylatul Qadr. It's not the night of the 27 only, where on the 28th you see the masjid is half full. And it's not the night on the khitmah of the Quran when the masjid is full and then the next night the masjid is empty. Huh? So every night should be treated the same. And you should do your best to inshallah get on that one and not miss because the reward is so great. And all of us in need of those rewards, inshallah. So I'm going to stop right here and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last thing I wanted to mention to you, the Sahaba, what they say, they made dua, Allahumma balighna Ramadan, but they say a specific dua. They said, Allahumma sallimna ila Ramadan 
وسلم رمضان إلينا وتسلمه متقبلا منا أو الله هند استو رمضان and hand Ramadan to us and take Ramadan from us accept it you know I, I always we all of us sometimes we say Allahumma ballighna Ramadan we stop right here right you know reaching Ramadan by itself is a bounty it's no question about it Allah give us a chance to be in Ramadan but also we wanted that Ramadan to come to us too so we wanted to fulfill everything that we can do in Ramadan if we do then Ramadan has been given to us. It's not just we reach the Ramadan, but Ramadan, we gained it. You can reach so many places, but gain nothing. But you want to reach and take, not just reach and look, right? The reason I say this, many of us sometimes we miss on so many things in Ramadan. You see people, ayyadu billahi, they miss fasting intentionally, or they, uh, they don't do qiyam al-layl and don't do this and that. So make sure that Ramadan reaches you, inshallah. Any questions? We'll stop right here, inshallah.